Hello and welcome to the Geek Club. And you may recognise this TV from a prior video uh, where it was donated. Uh, the reason it was donated was because it took about 20 minutes to switch on. So the owner was just going to throw it away. So offered to me, it to me if I could see if I could fix it. Uh, so what I think, well the other day it did take about 20 minutes to switch on. But then the other night we tried to do a live stream with it and uh, it just refused to switch on completely which is annoying so uh, we think uh, that there are two possibly two uh, capacitors on the power board which have blown it's a common thing with these Toshiba they used cheap power boards during this period uh, so they often go so what we're going to do is open it up see what capacitors they are and get them ordered and get some solder ordered as well because mine's missing and see if we can get this common issue resolved i'll put the tv model on the screen here because i don't know it offhand but yep let's get this on the floor and get it stripped and we're messes right it's lucky that i like a good screw because there's one two three four well that's just for the back but i'll have to take them off anyway five six seven uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of the buggers. Oh, 15, 16. Oh, this is going to be a big long screw. I don't know if I've got to take that bit off. Probably not. Let's have a look. Right, so here we are, and this is obviously the power supply here. Uh, I can see offhand that one's bulge. Let's bring you in. Right, okay, uh, looking at the caps, there's where the mains goes in. I'm not touching any of this. <laughs> That's a big bugger. That will. Sorry, that's a big bugger. That will hurt you. Uh, but I can see here straight away, uh, this one is bulge. So, I imagine that is our culprit. So, that is, what is it? Sorry, difficult to do this with the camera and this at the same time. Uh, 2,700 microfarads at 16 volts so that one needs to be replaced for definite right it's about a week later the new capacitor has arrived uh, it's in this bag i'm keeping it there until i'm using it so it's uh, harder to lose it put that over there uh, so first thing you need to do is get this board out i've already taken the power cable out uh, so i can get rid of the back but I need to get these out Remembering, of course, where to go. Fortunately, these two are colour coded and they only go in one way. So that's of great help. Uh, I'm never always sure how some of these unclip. That goes in there, that goes in there. They'll sit uh, close to where they came from, so that always helps. And now I need to unscrew this. I'm being careful not to touch any electrical components because that may still hold the charge. Uh, we'll get this out now it's been sitting a week so that shouldn't have any charge but we will short it to try and make sure uh, using a rubber gripped screwdriver uh, so 
I in no way condone you doing this yourself. This is dangerous. That can hold lethal voltages, so do not try this yourself. In the meantime, time to watch me do some more screwing. Maybe we're not that screwdriver because that one doesn't fit. Put that back. That one doesn't want to play, so let's get a better screwdriver. Alright, you should now just lift out. There we go. Ta -da. And there's the big daddy, which I'm going to go downstairs and uh, in the presence of the wife, just in case it goes boom, I'm going to short that out between those two legs there just to make sure there's no voltage and then off camera i'm going to remove that because i don't like soldering on camera because i'm a bit cack handed and i'm not the third person to teach you how to solder so i'm going to remove that and put the new one in and then hopefully it should be done great i'll be back okay that uh, scary moment has been done uh sat down downstairs and just crossed between those two pins with the screwdriver and there was zero uh, nothing did no reaction at all so that is now safe so i'm going to desolder this one put in the new one and then we shall rebuild her and see if it's worked right the soldering has been redone i've put it back screwed it back in rewired it i've taken this out of the case just so we can test it I'm just going to switch it on, make sure nothing goes pop, because I don't trust my soldering. Give it a few seconds. It's buzzing. Oh, panel's on. Wow. Okay. Good sign. Yeah, and the panels come on, so uh, wow. Okay, looks like successful operation. So what I'm going to do, take that back out, get the back on, screw her up, set her up, and we'll uh, get her in position where she would live, normally will live for live shows, and uh, switch her on, see what happens. Be right back. Right, here she is with the Commodore 64. Uh, where she's normally set up to do live shows, but it failed on the last live show. So let's uh, power her on and see how long it takes to come on. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. He's about now. There we go. And then to the blue screen. Well, to the computer screen. There we go. We can now. Play. Oh, yeah. Da da. Flimbo's quest to our heart's content. Isn't that cool? So, yeah, this applies to this TV, but they're pretty generic in the back, so if you've got a TV with similar symptoms, then it could be the same thing, just needs recapping in the power supply. Obviously, take great care back, back there. There are lethal voltages. If you're not sure, then ask somebody qualified to do this because it is dangerous in the end. Uh, but yes, we've resurrected it and we can do, do our live shows with the LCD again. So, there you go. If you enjoyed this sort of video and you like retro gaming, retro technology, and all that sort of thing, then uh, please consider subscribing. If you've enjoyed the video, it's been useful, then please like. You can join us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you support the channel, you can do through Patreon. So, on that, Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful to you. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>